never underestimate any action. These words are from my grandmother. It happened when I was six years old, where I just became aware that I was a privileged. I was living in a house and having three meals a day. But when I looked around me, I remember seeing five children laying down on the streets in Dakar, and you can see at their face that they were struggling to find food. I was very affected and start asking questions to myself. Why me? Why them? Why this unfair situation? And my grandmother, putting her hand on my shoulder, used to tell me, Sini, we all have the power to change things. So once a week, we used to cook together for the children. I remember the smell of the food, very aromatic, spices, and with her traditional knowledge of processing our indigenous crops, passed down from generation to generation, my grandmother taught me how to valorize our own food resources and create tasty and nutritious meals. I have learned a lot from her sides. And this early experiences instilled in me the belief that we have the power to create and transform everything. So while I was growing up and testing different cooking combinations, I just became passionate about food. It was in my mother's kitchen. And then I ended up as a food processing engineer. So I worked for several multinational food companies abroad in R&D, science, and innovation. But while I gained invaluable industry experience, I always felt far from my homeland. So during a visit back in Senegal, I realized that there was an imbalance in our food systems. On one hand, there were smallholder farmers who were struggling to have access to markets, and they are facing farm losses up to 50%. And on the other hand, in the market, we have mainly imported products, around 90%, and still food insecurity. For me, as a food processing engineer, I could not anymore accept this critical situation. And at this moment, something clicked on me and I decided to take action. Going back in my home country and develop innovative solution by leveraging on the potential of African indigenous crops. You know, millet, funio, kopi, baobab, all these super products which are gifted by our motherland that deserve to be valorized and to feed our communities. So with my team and I, we developed locally sourced and produced baby food by integrating a holistic approach by integrating a holistic approach where um, we are combining sustainable agriculture, woman-led agriculture, and also climate-smart African indigenous crops. And I really wanted to create a link between babies and smallholder farmers. So we were processing fruits vegetables, cereals, legumes into nutritious, without any added sugar, uh, baby purees and infant flour. And then after I was testing all these recipes and start developing uh, the market, I was 
I was realizing that it was necessary to create changes, to create transformational changes. Because if you would like to make this link between smallholder farmers and babies, we have to make some change. First, it was on the smallholder farmers' side. By guaranteeing them a market, we were inviting them to adopt better sustainable practices, and also they are going to grow more and more our traditional crops, which are often neglected or underutilized, while these crops are climate smart and also nutritious. And the second change, it was on the consumer side. First of all, as a food engineer, as food processor, we have to make food more attractive, more innovative, you know, aspirational. And then we invite consumers to be more aware about the impact when they decided to buy a product. Knowing that it's not only about the product that they are buying or about the organization which is behind, it's about the whole value chain that they are impacted. And this is a, was the critical changes. And for our case, it was about the smallholder farmers that we were struggling their revenue by 20%. It was about the thousands of jobs which are creating in the food value chain. And it's about the economic opportunities that are generated, especially for women. And to be honest, it was extremely challenging to achieve this result due to a lack of technical capacities, flexible funding, regular supply. But as Thomas Sankara said, you cannot achieve transformational change without a certain amount of madness. And for me, it was a combination of this madness and the bold vision that just made me realize that Senegal was the beginning. We have a whole continent where we can replicate our model in different African countries. We are almost facing the, the same challenges related to food insecurity and nutrition. I would like to invite you and to show that, yes, it's possible to create circular, inclusive, and sustainable business models. If I'm here today, I want you to reflect deeply on your actions, what you are doing on your daily basis, knowing that it's time to rewrite the narrative, to be more united and to collaborate together. And it's not for us, it's for our generations to come. You know, they will feel and live the Pan-Africanism vibes. They will be more proud of who they are and where they come from. It's so fundamental to preserve our cultural heritage, especially when it comes to food. And for the older generation, I invite you to support more directly the youth with a transmission approach, echoing my grandmother wisdom to support youth to thrive. So let's keep working together, inspiring each other, and create long lasting impact in the food system for our future generation. Thank you.